This is insane. Oh, well, well, well. Wuthering Waves is a game that I have been waiting for and has been on my radar for a very, very long time. And it still is because technically right now it's only in closed beta, but I was lucky enough to get access to the closed beta. So I wanted to make a video about my first impressions, my thoughts on the game, and show you guys a bit of what I've done so far because, oh my God, I am so impressed. As a guy that grew up with games like Dark Souls and loves challenging combat, I've been waiting for a game that I already love the style of, but can kind of fill in gaps where Genshin can't for me, which is the challenging side. I feel like there's not enough challenging Genshin, and Wuthering Waves is here to fill that. Let me take you on a little journey about what I went through when I played it for the first time. Loading up the game, you get this super cool intro animation to kind of ease you into the story a little bit, which most games do nowadays, and I think it's a fine way to go about things. The aesthetics of this game are super pretty, and it's all to do with sound, and you, you can hear all the different sounds in the cutscenes, in the combat, and just ordinary open world exploration. It's honestly quite amazing. All the names of like the items and the abilities are all to do with sound as well. I love it. The story is something that I'm going to start off with because you do kind of get dived in head first when it comes to the story and uh, there's good and bad. I did get access to the beta. This video is not sponsored or anything like that. I'm going to give you my overall opinions on everything. The good, the bad, the ugly, all of the above. The story itself starts off pretty damn slow, but I feel like that's okay and it's pretty normal. Every time I kind of express my thoughts that the story started off pretty slow pacing wise people had either hit me with the 1.0 in Genshin and HSR were pretty slow as well and it's like yeah they are that's fine my outlook is the first hour of a video game is one of the most important times for people playing because if somebody that doesn't have much time doesn't enjoy the first hour of a game they're not going to continue playing for another 10 20 30 100 a thousand hours it's probably just not going to happen so I feel like the start of the game could use a little bit more work in terms of story although one thing they do very very, very well is tutorials, including during the story and all the exploration mechanics and everything. So nothing bad to say about that. You come across random enemies, which are super cool. Some are easier than others. Some are more annoying than others. And some are just downright incredible. One of the first bosses you fight in the game is one of the coolest looking bosses. And I remember in one of the other closed betas, there was some footage that was put on YouTube where the boss had multiple phases. For some reason in this beta, it didn't show up unless I just haven't got to that part yet, which is very possible, but I don't know. I killed it and it, it seemed very very easy which is another thing the story content in this game does not seem that difficult if you play Genshin Impact or other gacha games it's kind of like that where the story bosses are toned down a little bit and then the more challenging fight comes later because I went to retry the bosses afterwards and they put up way more of a fight and it was way more fun but again this is just my first impressions I'm still like way way early in the in the beta right now by the time I get to the end of it and we start doing the super hard stuff I'll probably make another video on my final thoughts about Wuthering Waves and see if it's something that we'll be covering in the future because I would like to, but it very much depends. Story starts off pretty slow. It does pick up though. I have got to a point where I'm soft locked based on level at the minute. So I've got to do some things to just level up, which I'm going to do off stream just in my own time because I'm really enjoying the game as it is. When you meet a character called Scar, the story really does start to pick up and the pacing becomes better and everything. One thing I want to point out about this game as well is the facial expressions of the characters and the movements in just ordinary dialogue, not cutscenes or anything is phenomenal. It's so good. The game's made in Unreal Engine, so you can tell there's a lot of movements and stuff and a lot of assets and so many different settings that you can have and, and that they could add like ray tracing and stuff as well, which I'm very excited about, but I'm getting off topic again. I tend to get off topic when I get super passionate about something, so I apologize. Just try bear with me. I don't know. My brain goes a thousand miles an hour. But yes, the facial expressions and the emotions of the characters are very clear and abundant. It's amazing. It's like they're telling you a story just with the facial expressions. I love it so much. And the characters are very, very well written. So far, there's only Mandarin voiceover, so we don't get like the Japanese or Chinese or English voiceover just yet, but that will be coming. And the voiceover's good, but there is some glaring, glaring issues. When it comes to the story especially, there's a lot of bugs with the voiceover. Some lines just don't play at all. Some lines get cut off halfway through and only start after you click, even though it's already gone. The timings of the voices are sometimes off, mismatched. Uh, it's a whole thing, which I'm really hoping they fix before full release whenever that ends up being but honestly it's a beta so this is what a beta is for you're supposed to uncover bugs and issues and then they can fix it before the full release so i'm not mad about it it's just some things to point out for sure because it is important to fix now let's talk more about the combat because the combat itself was the main driving force in me even trying out this game in the first place like i say i already love genshin impact as a gacha game and i really didn't want to pick up another one but genshin i play for the story and the open world exploration end game is pretty
pretty lackluster or non-existent in my opinion. Spiral Abyss, we call it endgame because it's the only kind of endgame we have. It's just not up to par for where I would like the challenging content to be, just fighting against the timer. Wuthering Waves combat as it is, is so in-depth and cool. You can switch characters in mid-air, perform combos. There's some characters where you can like uppercut enemies into the sky, switch to another character, do a full aerial combo, switch to another character to plunge them back down. And it's just, it's mind-boggling how in-depth some of the combos are in this game. You can only have three characters on your team as well, so it's a little more limited in that sense, but I kind of prefer it, honestly. There's less to worry about. And you can focus more on doing your perfect dodges and your parries, which are also an incredible addition to any kind of video game about action combat, in my opinion. You can dodge attacks like normal just by getting out of the radius, or if you time it perfectly, you get this, like, white glow around your body, and it's like an iframe, an invincibility frame. So you take no damage, and you can do, like, a cool follow-up attack afterwards as well. Every character has cool charge attacks, and the E ability, a lot of characters have multiple versions of, so you can like hold it, or you can press it twice to, for it to do something different, or press it in between certain attacks for different combos. The combination of different things that you can do with the combat in this game blows my mind, and I'm still finding out more and more about it, like as we speak. So again, I'll go more in depth on that when I learn more about it in a separate video. But as first impressions go, dude, oh my god, the combat's wonderful. There's also this really cool system with echoes, so when you kill an enemy, there is a chance, I don't know exactly what the chance is, but with bosses, it's been like 100% for me. And then with smaller enemies, I'd say probably 70%. Chance of getting an echo from it, which you can absorb to basically capture it like a Pokemon. <laughs> I know that might sound absolutely ridiculous, but you capture it like a Pokemon and you can use it in battle with a separate ability button. I think it's uh, Q. And you can do what the monster does. So sometimes you'll transform into the monster if it's like a boss and do a ton of damage or a cool combo. Sometimes you'll just summon an enemy right next to you to like fire arrows or block damage. There's a really funny one with a turtle where it like does like a little dance party and heals you. I think there's like 211 different echoes that you can get. There's so much option. It's wild. I think it's going to be a very long time before people get bored of the combat system in Wuthering Waves. As long as they keep adding difficult content and expand upon endgame modes. That's very, very important with a game that's so heavily focused on combat like this. And I really hope they keep it focused on the combat as well as the story and stuff. Because I think both have incredible potential, but I think one without the other wouldn't do so well over a long period of time. I think the game needs both to be super successful, and I really want it to be successful because the gacha market always needs competition. Competition's great for all games involved. And honestly, I just really want this game to succeed. I think it looks incredible, and I've thought it since day one. The next thing that I want to talk briefly about is the gacha system because, oh my god. I'm going to let this clip speak for itself, or these couple of clips, because I was mind blown. Select a weapon for targeted convene can be changed at any time after selection and does not affect the guaranteed calculate. Excuse me? There's no shot Wuthering Waves did what I have been asking for for like a year and a half in Genshin and split the character and weapon ban. Sta D did they split the standard character and weapon banners into different banners? And you get a weapon picker? I assume you can get the standard ones on the event weapon if you, like, lose 50-50, right? You can't lose on weapon... The weapon ban at gacha is guaranteed weapon at max pity? That's actually wild for a gacha game. Guaranteed weapon, no 50-50. Holy shit. That you could also buy cost of the shop rather than pull... Wait, what? You can just straight up buy... What the hell? Holy fuck, that's incredible. It doesn't matter even if it takes a lot. That's insane that you can buy two constellations for a character that you have in the in the, in the the shop, dude, is wild. So yeah, the fact that the standard banners are split into two, like I've personally been advocating for in Genshin for like a year and a half now. So you can summon on either a character banner or a weapon banner is number one, wonderful. The fact that you can guarantee what standard weapon you get is insane. And there's no 50-50. And the fact that on the limited weapon banner, it's also 100% guaranteed is wild. The weapon banner is not a scam anymore. It's just good. Also on the starter, like beginner banner, you get 50 total pulls on it and you're guaranteed a five star off that banner as well. Really, really good. Fantastic idea. Hopefully all of that stuff remains past the beta into the full release, but we'll have to wait and see. Obviously everything is subject to change during beta, so we can't take any of this as gospel as it's going to be in the main game. But I feel like if they put it in the beta, it should be in the main game. Otherwise, people are probably going to be pretty mad. But yeah, honestly, one of the most forgiving gacha systems I've seen in a game like this. Also, the fact that you can buy the cons in the shop. I'm assuming every single banner change because that's when the timer changes on it. Like up to two cons per banner change is 
insane with in-game currency. It just blows my mind. It's very, very generous. It's amazing. The open world exploration is one more thing that I did want to go over as well, because honestly, I was pretty surprised by a lot of things in the open world exploration, namely the fact that you don't have to use stamina to sprint. And it makes sense because in this game, dodging is such a vital part of the combat. So if you come across enemies and you're already out of stamina, you're kind of screwed. You need to get those perfect timing dodges to be able to do your combos and everything. So it does make sense, but it was still a shock to me. Being able to run around aimlessly without using stamina is a godsend when you're so used to using stamina for every sprint. And it's going to be so hard to go back to having to use up stamina just to sprint now. You can also wall run, which is crazy. Side to side, up, down, whatever. You can just run up and down walls. You have a grapple, so you can grapple from place to place. Even if there's no little like star in the sky, so you can fast grapple to it like Spider-Man, you can always just grapple anyway, even like out of water. And of course you can swim. But yeah, the open world exploration feels great. I do feel like there could be a bit more density of enemies around the open world. I found myself running around quite a bit and in a game that's supposed to be kind of overrun with wild enemies and a ton of them, it felt a bit sparse at certain times for sure. I, I do feel like they, there could be a few more placements of enemies around, definitely. There's a couple of buggy movements now and then where it feels like your camera's not turning fully or something, but honestly, that'll all come with time after the beta and relevant feedback's being given, so I'm really not too worried about that. And I guess let's briefly talk about the character designs as well, because, oh my word. I've seen a lot of people disappointed saying that they're too muted in colors and like black and white and stuff, but honestly, I don't see that. I see the muted colors, but kind of supposed to be. This game is a very dark game compared to other gachas that I've played, and I kind of like that. It's its own vibe, its own style, and I think they should keep it that way. It wouldn't be bad to put the odd character in that doesn't fit the norm, but the character designs so far are phenomenal. You've got characters with blue hair that glows. You've got characters with all red. You've got characters that uh on the evil team, on the good team, whatever you want to call it, and it's quite easy to distinguish who's good and bad just based on what they're wearing, which honestly is a good sign because it's good character design. I think the boss designs and the character designs are all phenomenal. They're very different. This game does so many things right, and I really, really hope that after this beta's done and the relevant feedback's being given and the game comes out, that they can work on what needs to be worked on and it can come out and stand its ground in the gacha space. I'm honestly sick of the whole Genshin killer discourse. I've said it before and I'll say it again. The only thing that could ever kill Genshin is Genshin itself. And I mean, we almost saw that happen multiple times, but it never does. So I want this game to stand among the crowd of other gacha games that are up there at the top. No one's asking for it to take over Genshin or for Genshin to be better than it or it to be better than Genshin. I feel like there's going to be two different player bases for each game. Genshin will be far more casual. Wuthering Waves will be a bit more competitive, I feel like. Hopefully both stories are really good. Both communities are nice and can gel well together. But maybe that's asking too much. I'm not too sure. And yeah, I'm really happy with the game. So far, I'd give it a solid 8 or 9 out of 10 even. Even with the bugs and the glitches and the, and the issues. It's just that good. Let me know down in the comments if you got access to the beta, if you've been playing, or even if you've just been keeping up with the game and what your thoughts on it are. I know a lot of people are trying to avoid spoilers right now. Now, which is more than fair, very understandable. Just waiting for the full game to release. I really wanted to play the beta and just jump right in and get in there this time because I didn't get access to the first beta and I only played a little bit at Gamescom last year. So I really just wanted to try it out and see if it was something that I would vibe with. And I really, really do. So you can definitely look forward to more Wuthering Waves content coming. If not on this channel, it will be on the second channel. So make sure you check that out. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace. Ah, future Brian here. Sorry, don't be scared. There's a couple of extra things that I wanted to mention about the settings in the game, which is the fact that they have a 120 FPS setting, which is incredible. Genshin's obviously hard capped at 60 FPS, so having 120 FPS on PC at least, I assume it's the same on mobile, but I could be wrong, is wonderful. Also, one thing I would like them to add is with the parry feature, the way that you parry is by normal attacking as soon as this shows up when an enemy's attacking. And I think the parry feature is great. However, I think it should be on a different button than just normal attack because when you're just mashing away you don't want to be paying attention 100% of the time some people will just want to hit a different button and time it well to be able to parry the enemy and for me it's not even necessarily not paying attention because I love hard focusing on the combat in games like this it's more so I want to feel like I can't just mash and get a lucky parry I want the parry to feel more satisfying so having it on a separate button would be ideal in my opinion also just to know on any of the banners there's no soft pity stated so we don't even know if there is a soft pity yet.
yet. It is just in beta. Maybe we'll find out that information later down the line when we get the full release of the game. But just to make that very clear, there's only hard pity stated. And while we're on the topic of the gacha system, when I went to take a look at the store, I'm on EU servers here and the currency is set to USD. One of my biggest gripes about Genshin Impact is when you go to buy currency in a different country, such as the UK, for example, we have to pay in Great British pounds, but the currency doesn't get converted. So the $99 pack is 99 pounds. So we're basically paying like $120, $130 for the same thing, which is ridiculous. And it feels like you're getting ripped off half the time. And I know that's the same for a lot of other countries. So I'm really hoping on full release, Wuthering Waves keep this system of keeping it all in just USD or at least converting it down to what it should be in the respective currencies. That'd be an amazing addition.